Thank you. So, I'm African. I was born in Zimbabwe, and I grew up uh, in South Africa. And there's been a long-running cliche about how Bitcoin mass adoption is going to happen in Africa. And I'm here to tell you that it's true. Innovation isn't disruptive when there isn't an entrenched incumbent to disrupt, when there's no legacy infrastructure acting as a ball and chain. There's this notion of leapfrogging, where there are standard services that people skip and move directly into the newest and most innovative. Now, Africa is the large, second largest mobile market in the world. Uh, mobile money users are, uh, are greater, there are more of them than traditional bank account holders. In fact, 96% of the transactions in Zimbabwe are digital. And the central bank governor recently came out and said they want to close that gap. So everywhere you look now, if you were, if you were to travel in, into Africa, you'll see that people at every level are using these new technologies, these mobile money-driven uh, technologies. But what I want to share with you now is that even though this is going to be a story from an African perspective, in many ways, of course, Africa is behind in terms of what is happening in the developing world. But in many uh, other aspects, if you think about this leapfrogging, they're ahead. And so the story I'm going to tell you now is not just about what is going to be happening in Africa, but in, in probably in your own lives as well, when you eventually catch up to what is happening in the African continent. So, of course, the first thing, if you think about it, is this general mistrust in fiat. Now, my, my family was affected by the inflation that happened in Zimbabwe in 2008, but we see this as a growing, a growing trend if we look at Venezuela and so on. I think there's this idea that fiat nowadays, especially if you've been in a crypto space, is inferior and maybe a bit risky. But also, there are many undocumented migrant workers around the world that even though that there's, there's these very uh, efficient technologies, they're very uh, difficult to get into. And also, then the most important thing that we have found, and this again is a global thing, although affects Africans most uh, uh, strongly, is this high cost of remittance. Now we see uh, 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 expats working around the world, sending money home, and in Africa, some of the world's poorest people are paying the highest prices for cross-border remittance. And so, uh, of course, you know, it's always been this idea that, that uh, cryptocurrency is going to be able to solve this problem. But also in Africa, a great thing is that people love cryptocurrency. In fact, if you were to go look now, South Africa is consistently number one in terms of Google Trends uh, interest in Bitcoin. And also, it's a very young, dynamic continent. 41% are under the age of uh, uh, 15. And in fact, more than half are under the age of 25. And they're outward looking. They're looking at the world around them, and they're seeing uh, all these amazing things, and they are desperate to get involved. And it's the, the population of the continent is almost the same as China and India. So we have this really uh, um, phenomenal uh, uh, space where all this sort of uh, innovation that we see happening around us is uh, becoming very uh, interesting. And uh, also now, this is a narrative that we constantly hear in the crypto space. This whole idea that cryptocurrency and Bitcoin is outside of the government purview and we should, we should be excited about this sort of crypto anarchic world that we are creating. But this is misguided. In fact, you know, if you want to have an, an industry that, that is, thrives, you're going to have to actively engage your regulators. You're going to have to bring them on board. And uh, we see how regulation often follows uh, innovation. So by building these things and constantly engaging your regulators and making sure that they feel comfortable with this technology, then uh, uh, we're going to see a lot more acceleration in terms of the world that we want to see. And of course, you know, um, Bitcoin isn't just the scary s system that is going to uh, uh, undermine central banking. A lot of governments, even though uh, they might seem uh, that they have their own interests at heart, are, lo are looking for solutions to bring into uh, financial inclusion. And uh, what they're seeing, and this is the narrative that we should actually be uh, persisting, is that uh, uh, it's not, the, of course, that you'll never be able to regulate the protocols, but you can certainly regulate the businesses. And we see how what happened with file sharing in the, in the sort of mid-2000s. Uh, BitTorrent, uh, file sharing technology, was over 70% of the internet traffic. And now today, because of uh, services like iTunes and Netflix and so on, we see now that BitTorrent traffic is under 3%. And this is the only way that the industry is going to move forward, by creating legitimate businesses that comply with whatever regulations are happening in that country, by actively engaging your regulators, and then we're going to finally see the growth that we want and the adoption that we want. 
Then also, this is now our plan. We want to make Bitcoin Cash uh, accessible and easy to use. And this is what Centby has been focused on. And I hope that this is the same uh, agenda that you have as well. And what I'm going to now do is just tell you about some of the things that we're doing to try and achieve this. Because it's an ongoing journey that we're all taking and we're all very interested and excited to work with each other. But how are we going to do this? How are we going to bring people into the space? So first of all, the most important thing is usability. Now, Centbee is, uh, uh, there's a lot going on in what we're doing with Centbee, but it all revolves around our user experience. And it's always been this idea of how do we make Bitcoin easy to use for people? How do we make our grandparents and uh, unsophisticated, technologically uh, disinclined friends and family used to this thing? And uh, it's very easy. We have so many social media applications out there. We've got so many apps that people use. And if you just try and focus on making the experience of Bitcoin exactly the same as in social networking and all these other apps, then you are going to achieve what we want, global mass adoption. So what we've done is we've now focused on trying to make Bitcoin as easy and as simple as using a social media app. And that is how, where we've begun. So what we do is we integrate with your contacts and we allow people to send Bitcoin. We don't even have the terminology pay because inf Bitcoin is just information after all. And you send messages and so on to your friends. Well, now you can send Bitcoin. Also, what we are doing uh, strongly as well and focusing on heavily, and I'm going to talk more about this because this is a strong focus, is the, the, the merchant adoption, where you can now easily go and pay for things with Bitcoin because holding it is useless until you can use it. And the most important thing now is going to be to get merchants to start accepting it so we can have demand for Bitcoin. And that means, of course, the value will go up. So let me just uh, uh, tell you some more things that uh, we are going to be bundling into our, our wallets over the coming months. You know, um, what we see is mobile products today that allow people to easily purchase things like their groceries and so on. Uh, uh, also, uh, buying airtime and data, um, other utilities like electricity. Uh, uh, these are the sorts of things that people want in a wallet. They're able to easily pay for these uh, uh, services and utilities. And I'm going to show you now how we are trying to achieve this. We have, uh, uh, we're engaging many partners in this space. So um, uh, this is the goal, this is the aim, trying to make Bitcoin useful. By the way, when I say Bitcoin, I mean Bitcoin Cash, because Bitcoin Cash is Bitcoin. Bit of a <laughs> fodder for the trolls. Um, so the first thing is getting it. Now, you know, uh, obviously we have all these online exchanges and so on, and that's great, and we need exchanges uh, uh, to, to maintain the environment. But the first thing most people say is, how do I get these things? So now we already have digital goods that are on sale at retailers and so on. So we're just going to take that exact same approach, the ability to go into a retail store and buy vouchers with uh, Bitcoin. There's two kinds of vouchers that we have. One will be like an iTunes gift card, and the other one can be something that is printed on a till slip, but it's a, a, a lot more uh, easy and efficient. And uh, how that works is that you can buy the value of your Bitcoin, but it only actually is redeemed as Bitcoin when you uh, decide to do it. So you can buy a, a $100 worth of Bitcoin today, you've got your voucher, and then in six weeks' time, you can then redeem $100 worth of Bitcoin. So by purchasing the voucher, you're not exposed to the volatility. But uh, uh, another thing is, what we are very excited about, is that we're, we are partnering with uh, Africa's uh, uh, largest retailer and uh, largest mobile money uh, uh, operator, and we are allowing people to go into these stores and actually now purchase uh, uh, Bitcoin and then uh, be able to redeem that onto their uh, mobile devices. Uh, and then once you have it, then everything opens up. The power is now in your hands, and you can now go and uh, uh, be able to use it as well. So we have this, uh, another feature within, uh, within a Centby that allows people to go and do cross-border remittance. And this is, of course, going to drastically reduce the cost of sending money cross-border um, and, uh, 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 and increase the efficiency and uh, also the uh, convenience as well. Because right now, if you were to try and do cross-border remittance, if you've ever done that, there's always a lot of forms you've got to fill in. But using cryptocurrency really uh, empowers us to do that. So this is going to be something that I think is really going to be the sort of low-hanging fruit that uh, brings a lot of people who might not necessarily be interested in cryptocurrency, but just looking for a cheaper alternative and a more efficient and cost-effective alternative to uh, be able to send money to their relatives. Uh, this is uh, something that we uh, are very excited about, and, and we feel like this is going to bring a lot of people into the space. But now, what I want to do is I want to focus on the merchant, because uh, if you can crack the merchant 
aspect of this. If you can get Bitcoin Cash payments into as many merchants as possible, that's when the world is going to become the world that we want to uh, live in. So I'm now going to spend a little bit of time telling you about the merchant process because there has been a lot of uh, uh, companies out there that are trying to figure this out. How are we going to be able to make it possible for uh, merchants to easily accept uh, Bitcoin? Now, of course, you know, we see the QR codes and all that sort of thing, but retailers really struggle to try and adopt something entirely new. So if you are trying to bring in a new solution and say, look, we need uh, you to now install this or we need you now to have this new thing on the, on the, on the countertop, that's going to be quite a difficult thing for the retailer to uh, accept and use. So where, how, what is the best place? Where is the best place to now look at uh, merchants and how to accept them? And I'm going to give you a little bit of a, 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 a simplified lesson in how merchants operate and how they accept payments and how uh, we can now insert ourselves into that space. So here we're going to have a little bit of le a, a simplified lesson on, on Bitcoin uh, acceptance. So of course, you know, uh, uh, retailers have what is called a point of sale. That will usually be some software that is downloaded, uh, installed on the, on the, on the, on the cash, uh, cashier's desk, and what what that does is it links into the inventory, where the prices are and so on. And also what it can do is, uh, very often is that it can link uh, to what are called value-added services. Now, a value-added service are the sorts of digital goods that you see uh, on the counter. So if you're buying iTunes gift cards, if you're buying airtime, data, electricity, or something like that, those are the value-added services that can link to the POS. Then, very importantly, is the actual payment interface, the terminal that the customer will now go and interact with to make that payment. And then what happens in the, uh, below that, and of course there can be QR codes and so on, and the, the, the credit card uh, terminals. And then at the bottom are the tender platforms. Now, we, uh, I'm sure you, you know uh, credit cards, of course you use them. Uh, some of the tender platforms are the, the banks, so being able to directly integrate into the banks. And now, of course, we have exchanges where people can now go and purchase things uh, with Bitcoin. But now, how do we uh, tie this all together? Where can we come and insert ourselves to make the experience from the merchant's perspective, but also most importantly from the customer's perspective, as seamless and as easy as something that they already know? Now, what connects all these th the layers together are what are called the merchant integrators. These are third-party companies that will go to the merchants, and they will tie all these different systems together. Or they'll tie the stack together. And so what we have now uh, identified is that this is the exact right place to bring Bitcoin Cash merchant payments. Uh, if we approach the merchant integrators and give them tools to be able to easily do this, that means the customer can come along and use NFC, they can uh, uh, use a QR code, the merchant doesn't have to become educated about how these things work, and we can make sure that this process is efficient and as simple as possible. So we're delighted that we've, been, we've partnered now with uh, Enchain to be able to start building these, uh, uh, these uh, tools. And in fact, we're not just going to be building it for ourselves, we're going to be building these uh, SDKs, APIs, and tools and plugins for merchants as an open source toolkit. Now, of course, we know Enchain has a wealth of, inter uh, of IP that is going to be made available for free to use for Bitcoin Cash uh, uh, vendors and companies. So we're going to be including that into the merchant tool set that we are creating that we are then going to be offering free to the community that you can now take and you can uh, uh, supply to the, the, the merchant integrators. And then if you are that way inclined, if that's the sort of business that you want to be involved with, you can act as the tender platform where you can now process those uh, payments through these plugins. So we think that by creating this tool set, you're going, to, uh, it's going to, you're going to start seeing rapid adoption of Bitcoin Cash because, again, the whole experience is going to be precisely what merchants already understand. And that's the, the, the goal that we have. That's uh, what we're trying to achieve. So I'm going to now just also tell you another thing that we're doing here. I always bring this in, in uh, because I think it's very, uh, very important. And I know the Bitcoin Cash community um, uh, is excited about making the world a better place. One of the, the technologies that we created a few years ago was the ability for people to directly pay energy, uh, buy energy for, for smart meters. And so what we did was we put a, a, a meter into a school and we allowed a, a foreign donor to directly fund the energy needs of that school. And I would like you to please, if you li uh, can, go to YouTube and just search Gamroff TEDx and you're going to hear the story about this and you're going to see again how Bitcoin Cash can actually make the world a better place and reach the long tail of, uh, of these charitable causes. So that sent me. I hope that uh, what you do now is uh, sign up on our website. And uh, in the next few days, we're going to uh, uh, open access to uh, 
to you. And uh, we, we hope that you can start uh, using Senfi and uh, uh, telling us how, what you think, how, uh, what, what you would like, what you like about it, what you don't like about it. But we really believe that now what we have is the ability to actually bring Bitcoin Cash to the mainstream. And uh, we're tremendously excited about it. So thank you for your time, and I hope to answer some questions. <laughs> Thank you, Lorian. Sent B, all the buzz. All right, any questions for Lorian? Questions? Questions? Who's excited to try his app? Uh, Roger over there has got a question. How soon? Yeah, uh, well, you know, uh, we, uh, we've only just started growing now. Uh, for the last uh, year and a half, it's been mostly me building uh, out CentP. But thanks to Enchain now, we've uh, been able to start uh, building up our team. Uh, so that's been a, a something that's going to accelerate the development of this. Uh, so uh, the, the whole intention was to announce today that you could download it now. But uh, these things never work out as you like. But certainly in the next few days, we hope in the next week, that we can uh, open access, early access to everybody. Right, I saw some other hands. More hands. I saw some hands. The gentleman in the white shirt over there. Oh, okay, we'll start over here and then we'll get to you. Yes. Um, so you, you, talk, you talked about uh, working with regulators, and I think uh, what a lot of us probably hope for in the future is a world where we don't actually have to change from Bitcoin Cash back into a local fiat currency. But you know, when it comes to tax in particular, I wonder if you have any thoughts about making that easier for merchants, because right now, every time you sell crypto, you create this taxable event and so forth. Yes, and uh, you know, uh, I mean, crypto is uh, is money after all, and so uh, I'm sure there's going to be uh, the need for accounting packages to account for a crypto as a currency. Um, I think that it's important that we we do our best to comply with whatever tax laws there are in the space, and uh, you know, fighting against that, trying to hide away from uh, the regulators and the taxman is just going to be it's going to be inevitable that you end up failing. So um, again, I, I, we we've had a lot of success because we've been engaging our tax authorities and our, our central bank and regulators and uh, we've been working hard to educate them that this is not something that uh, uh, is underground and they will never have a visibility or access to that companies who are engaging with cryptocurrency can still be transparent and compliant demand KYC and AML uh, obligations from their customers and so on so that that again is the only way we're going to be able to accelerate this forward um, but uh, uh, you know uh, again it's it's a, a new space and uh, regulators might have a knee-jerk reaction uh, to it but I think that uh, by being positive about it and transparent, you know, this is something that we can uh, move forward rapidly. Personally, I think a great idea for a Bitcoin cash or cryptocurrency venture is an application or API to help people account more easily for the exchange of value and an increase or decrease in value when there is a cryptocurrency exchange to fiat that could integrate with apps and other applications and could be shown to regulators and tax authorities as a means for compliance for both businesses and consumers. So if you got an idea for that, go do it. Question over here. Um, thank, thank you, Lauren. That was fantastic. And Thanks for talking about the importance of user experience, which is um, often neglected. Jimmy, you just actually took my question. <laughs> I wanted to ask about the POS system. Um, yes. How, you know, basically what Jimmy just said, are there tools and APIs and sort of roadmaps for those sort of tools? Because it's one thing to talk to merchants and ask them for a way that they can get more money. Uh, I do that a lot. Um, currently in Japan, a lot of people are interested in Bitcoin, but they, they say, well, my accountant will know what to do with it, or you know, such and such. So my question A is about Jimmy's point, those sort of tools, and also um, your POS system in general, is it something targeted specifically at Africa, or do you have international reach? How does one integrate with that, for, with their particular business? Okay, so uh, the, the part of the question that I, I, I got was, the, the, the scope of this. This is certainly not intending to be only limited to the African uh, market. Uh, we have a, a global ambition, and along with Enchain, we think we can achieve that. Uh, of course, there are some markets that are more receptive. Uh, you know, South Korea and Japan are, are, are specific, but uh, you know, many countries around the world. Um, now, uh, w of course, one of the issues is when you come to a merchant is that they don't want to accept Bitcoin Cash. One day, they, we hope that they will. But um, it's very important to act as that tender platform, and that's why 
you can have the tool set, but you're still going to need to provide the exchange service to be able to settle the um, money uh, into uh, local fiat. And by the way, I just, uh, on that, I, I would like to just, uh, uh, since I've got a, a platform, um, I'd like to uh, make a proposal. Uh, one of the issues that we've had is uh, with confirmation time and so on and the terminology that we use. And uh, zero confirmation, there's been a lot of debate about you know, how do we uh, change that, uh, th that terminology because it's very difficult for a lot of people to understand. So, you know, in the, in the merchant uh, system or in payment system, you know, again, I'm, I'm adopting a lot of ideas from existing technology. And when we adopt ideas from existing payments, there's a lot of terminology that actually follows through into Bitcoin. So if one of the examples is that when you make payments, then what happens is uh, 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 if you make a transaction, then there's this process called settling where the banks then go and uh, settle with each other and figure out what are, what are the positions that everybody is in right now. If you, I send money to another bank, it's not that my money moves directly to that bank at the end of the day or whenever it is, all the positions are then evaluated. And that's called settling. And, and then there's the process, uh, sorry, that's called clearing, I'm sorry. The clearing is when, when everything is, uh, all positions are, def are, are, are figured out. And then there's the settling process where money actually moves. And I, I, I suggest maybe that we, instead of using zero confirmation, we just called a, a zero conf transaction a cleared transaction because that clearly tells us what our position is. And then when we actually get it confirmed and it's a settled transaction. So maybe a zero conf can become cleared and uh, uh, confirmed, settled. What about yeah. instantly, instant clearance? Yeah. There we go, it's instant clearance. Mm. We've solved it all. Okay, <laughs> question, let me ask, uh, this is a nice gentleman. If you talk, I'll repeat it for you. Yeah, um, could you give us a bit of an idea about what, what you think the growth in the Bitcoin Cash um, uses in Africa at the moment? All right, the question is, can you give us an idea, mm -hmm. Lorian, about the growth of Bitcoin Cash users in Africa at the moment? Uh, well, it's it's difficult, obviously, to tell. I mean, we have uh, some very a, a very large exchange uh, that uh, has uh, I mean, it has global reach, but uh, we have an idea of how many users that are on that exchange. Um, there's about a million, I think, uh, users locally in, uh, within the continent. Um, but uh, uh, as Jimmy said earlier, you know, one of the issues is that uh, we just don't have exchanges throughout the rest of the continent and Zimbabwe. Uh, you know, premiums are extremely high because you know people desperately want these currencies and are willing to pay so much more than uh, than whatever the market value is. So uh, I think uh, one of the most important things right now is to try and figure a way of moving, uh, getting exchanges into those countries. Now it's really the case of if you build it, they will come. You know, it's really just a technology issue. This, uh, of course, there's the regulatory issue, but you know, a lot of regulators in Africa are kind of busy or uh, under, you know, cap they don't have an enough capacity or they don't really understand what's going on. Not to say that we should uh, take advantage, well, we should take advantage of that. Uh, we shouldn't abuse that. But, uh, uh, you know, if anybody here uh, uh, has the ability to just provide technology, we can certainly uh, have an, uh, a very uh, uh, open market that, um, uh, you know, Africans will, will love. And we, we, we've got three. So uh, I know specifically of countries around in sub-Saharan Africa that are desperate for an exchange solution. And uh, if you can offer that to them, uh, you would uh, find a lot of success there. So anecdotally, demand is high. Google Trends says, uh, as you know, South Africans specifically love cryptocurrency. Um, it's, I guess it's hard to, to know exactly. All right, one last question from the gentleman standing over there. Thanks for presenting today, it was interesting. I had a follow-up question about uh, distribution through integrators. Uh, I'm just curious in particular how that would work. It's obviously, it's a great strategy to sell through integrators, but it seems like to support Bitcoin Cash, the hardware that the integrators sell, whether it's like terminals or the point of sale systems, all have to work with Sentry to show essentially, I would imagine, some sort of QR code. And that's like a lot of different vendors, a lot of hardware terminals. It implies you have to redesign with those vendors. So it's not actually uh, as much as you think. I mean, uh, th this is completely hardware agnostic. There's no uh, 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 interface with the hardware. The merchant integrator, now normally what happens is a, a, a retailer will have one integrator. And uh, if it's a, a large retailer, uh, then uh, you, know, you just need to approach that one integrator. And you don't need to worry about what kind of hardware it is. Uh, as I said, if you just go with the standard, pr the standard ways of interacting with that terminal, like an NFC or something like that, then if you just approach the, the merchant integrator who is already integrating all these different payment methods, that's what they do. If you give them this tool set, then that'll just be another one that they plug in by, and using the same interfaces. So hardware is, uh, is irrelevant and also 
yes, of course, uh, uh, there are many retailers out there and they all have their own merchant integrators, but it's not you know, millions of integrators. And also, if you provide these um, tools for free, then it's, it's quite easy for those integrators to, to you know, seek out th those things themselves. So the, really, this is probably the most efficient way to now uh, bring Bitcoin Cash into the existing infrastructure that they have. Because merchant integrators, that's their whole job, is to integrate payment methods. You give them the tools, they can, they can uh, integrate it into the terminal, and that then covers the entire retail market that they um, supply to. Awesome. Who now wants to visit Lorien in South Africa? Thank you. You're going to welcome the whole crowd to South Africa? Well, yes, come to South Africa. Please welcome you. Thanks. One more big round of applause for Lorien. Mm.